Alrighty, it is time to get started on the responsive blog project. You can find a link to a zip file with the project in it in the downloadable section. Note that the zip file is pretty large because of all the images inside it. So this is what the blog looks like right now. And you should be asking yourself, oh, what the heck is this ugly thing? The good news is that by the end of the course, you'll be turning it into something that looks a little bit like this, which is definitely a lot nicer. Now, responsive images can be as much of an art as it is a science. The way you make your images responsive will totally depend on how you want to use them in your sites. When all is said and done, your blog may look very different than this, but that doesn't make it any less correct. It's up to you to decide how you want to beautify this blog and make its images responsive. To start working on this project, which is really zoomed out here by the way, I'm going to give you a few changes. Some will be mandatory and some will be optional. Your goal is to make these images look sane. Right now they're massive, both in their visual size on the page, and this is zoomed out to 25% here, so they're really, really big. And they're also big in the number of bytes that they include, in that they're just simply way too large. Back at 100%, it's pretty clear these images aren't fitting inside their containers. The images in the website need some kind of width applied to them so that they stay inside their container, which in this case is an article. Once you've done that, set a maximum width on the article element to give the blog a little bit better structure. I recommend starting with a width of something around 50 M's. Remember, an M refers to the font size. So a 50 M element with font sizes of 16 pixels means that we're talking about a width of 800 pixels. By the way, notice how these images are coming from images source. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Next up, check out this vault. You see how its natural width is almost 3,300 pixels? That's just massive. What's the point of so many pixels when it's going to be displayed at about 800 pixels wide? Even on a 2x display, you only need 1,600 pixels across. So there are so many wasted bytes here. These images need to be a lot smaller. I want you to use the tools and techniques that you've been learning to reduce the resolutions and compress the images. See how low you can get the resolutions and how much compression you can use while still keeping really crisp images. To do so, you've got Grunt, Image Magic, and Image Optim on your side. And you definitely don't have to use these, but it'll make your life a lot easier if you do, especially Grunt. If you've got Grunt up and running, you should be able to use the Grunt file in the project directory after you run the command in the instructor notes. The command will make sure that the Grunt responsive images package is installed. Notice that Grunt is going to run against images in the images source directory and put them in the images directory. Right now in the HTML, all of the images can be found in the images source directory. But once you've optimized them, make sure you change their directory to images. There are links to lots of documentation in the instructor notes if you need help. Right now, the page is coming in around 3.1 megabytes, which will take forever to load on mobile. Seriously. Try loading the site using the network throttling option set to 3G. You may want to grab a cup of coffee while you wait a few minutes for the page to load. You can probably reasonably drop the total bytes from the images below 1.5 megabytes or even further. In terms of optional changes, the images are looking pretty lonely right now. They need some captions, so add some. In the solution video, you'll see me add some captions using the semantic figure tag, but you can use whatever technique you'd like. See the instructor notes for more documentation on figure. So to summarize, first things first, make sure the images fit within their containers. Then once you've done that, make the containers a reasonable width, and I recommend about 50M. Once the images are actually being displayed properly, it's time to resize and compress them. They should stay sharp, but the page should drop below 1.5 megabytes total. In fact, I'd be willing to bet you can do even better than 1.5 megabytes. Make sure you use automation tools, otherwise your life is going to be much more difficult than it needs to be. But to be fair, it can be difficult installing Grunt, so make sure you use the instructor notes. And as an optional challenge, add some captions. Of course, make sure you're testing on different devices and network settings. And once you've done the first, second, and third parts of this challenge, a code will appear on the screen. Type that code in here to continue. 